Strategic planning includes financial, operating, a SWOT analysis, which is your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And I know y'all are hating this. Your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're thinking, oh, holy crap, does he really think we're going to go do this stuff? You're going to have to do some of it, I'm telling you. You're going to have to get better at this stuff. You can't just keep doing what you've been doing and hoping that things are going to get better. And you may even be doing great now, and I hope you are. But you're not going to keep doing great unless you can constantly move that ball, constantly improve. The ability to analyze initiatives for increasing sales and decreasing expenses. And I know you get this slide, you're tired of the grind. That's when you come to work, you turn on the coffee maker, you turn on the lights, you know, you, you tell everybody hi, you answer your first phone call. And you go home, you turn off the coffee maker and you turn off the lights and you go home. And you're sick of that. You're absolutely sick of it. So you either need to get excited and you need to learn to grow and you need to make some changes and you may need to give the keys to Junior, sorry, or you need to, or, or sell or do something else. And I, I happen to be at a point in my life where I'm loving life. I'm loving what I'm doing. I love my work. It's a disease. I still work way too much. I still work 12 hours a day, most Saturdays, and I just love my work. But that's the way you have to be to be really successful. You've got to learn to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Some of you folks are not interested in a bridge plan. You're not interested in financial stuff and all that. It's okay. I remember when I hired my first controller. Hire somebody that knows how to do all that stuff that will make a difference in your business. And they will pay for themselves. Their salary will pay for themselves. A controller instead of a bookkeeper is a really good example. You can use your peers and other sources including association meetings. No matter how fast you go, it's not fast enough. Using all the other resources, and we're going to talk some about benchmarking and using the other resources and the big and easy tool in the other session. Financial. We th I remember I used to think, well, I don't want to do a financial plan. The banker wanted it because I had to borrow money. I didn't have any money. And I thought, well, that, that son of a gun, I don't want to borrow any money. Yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't want to have to do that big fancy financial plan. But I realized later that the financial plan, and so many people do it annually. No, you do it by the month. And then you, then you look at it every month. And are you hitting the goals or not? And if you're not, make a course correction. That's the only way you get to the last number is to work on each of the intermediate numbers. Make sure it ties to the metrics. Don't project that you're going to sell more, but that you're not going to buy more cars. And if you project you're going to buy more cars, have you, have you thought about how you're going to process them and how you're going to haul them? And do you have enough racks to, to store the parts? Those are the operating metrics, not just the financial metrics. And I love holding people accountable. Ask your dismantlers how, much, how many cars they can process. If they say they can, then hold them to that standard. I don't think I've, and I know I've been here through the years several times and I've taught cradle to grave and how we pay for how we pay our dismantlers by the car and virtually everybody doubles their production when they go to that and if you're not doing that you need to consider figuring out how to do it. I'll be glad to help you with it or, or Jim Counts or somebody will. And bridge planning, I talked a little of that. Are you an acquisition target? I'm going to talk a little about that for those of you there's probably somebody in the room that's talking to LKQ right now. And they are very, very acquisitive right now. They're, they're interested in growing. They have plenty of money. They've just raised their credit lines. 